How's it going everyone? College Lefty and in this video I'm going to be discussing uh, certain ways to improve MLB The Show 20. We are a few months away. We're a little bit over halfway through the game cycle and I want to kind of go back to MLB The Show 18, talk a little bit about some differences that we have had in this year's game from last year's game and probably the first thing that I noticed, the number one thing is the ticket counter. Uh, simply because the ticket counter was a way where you could unlock cards throughout the entire year. It didn't really necessarily matter what your level was. As long as you got to a certain level and were able to unlock the card, you could purchase them at any time throughout the year. So I also wanted to talk a little bit about the content. As we see here on the community market in MLB The Show 18, there are 96 pages as we move um hit R2 and L2 through these cards. Uh, we noticed that there are some flashbacks right away as well as live series cards mixed right in there. In MLB The Show 19, there are a lot more cards, a lot more content, and uh, far more options to choose from. So I definitely think that that is a bonus. Uh, there's also only one map, one conquest map in uh, MLB The Show 18. There were a variety of conquest missions and modes that you had to complete, but there was only one map. So Kind of confusing in that aspect, but uh, in terms of gameplay, I played this game uh, a few more games than I have MLB The Show 19, simply because I had more time to play this game while I was in college. Now that I'm kind of graduating and trying to focus on my career, I haven't had as much time to uh, play MLB The Show 19, but I definitely was able to complete all of the content, pretty much all of the programs in MLB The Show 18, so I want to talk a little bit about that in comparison to MLB The Show 19. I know we're on uh, 18 to start this video off, but we will be moving into uh, 19 and stay on 19 from this point moving forward. So I, I wanted to talk a little bit about the differences. We noticed a, a different creative player system as well, uh, different programs. I know that in the MLB The Show 19, uh, the programs were more rewarding. They didn't give out you know bronzes and silver cards that nobody ever really used or besides events and battle royale stuff like that uh they gave us more usable cards and better end game cards in these programs in mlb the show 19 there were also some timed missions that gave us stubs uh, slightly different from 17 we saw the my career missions, stuff like that so the game has kind of adapted over time and evolved in the in a sense but uh, I mean, in this in this game, it'll be the show 19. As we see here, we haven't even reached the live series cards yet. Mike Trout is uh, is actually on there now, but uh, about page 12 or so before we get to some li uh, live series players and 116 pages of absolute uh, fire content. So I think that uh, it will be the show 19 definitely has better content. I think the main thing to keep in mind with um, with these stats are are the ERA and the average. I have a much higher average in this year's game as well as a higher ERA. I feel like uh, MLB The Show 19 wanted to move in the direction of making it a little bit more simple to hit as well as uh, making it a little bit more challenging to pitch. And those two things kind of go hand in hand whenever it's easier to hit, makes it a little bit difficult to pitch. And uh, I'll talk a little bit about that in the future. But anyway, uh, the XP reward path was kind of a way to step away from the ticket counter and basically allow yourself to earn five ninety nine overall signature series players by reaching uh, Diamond 100, along with some rewards along the way. I think this was a little bit better than the ticket counter. However, I would like to see both implemented into the game if possible. I would like to see somewhat of a ticket counter as well as XP reward path because as we see now, I'm a level Diamond 100. I know a lot of other people are level Diamond 100 and there isn't really any cards to unlock throughout that, but let's say with the ticket counter, you might not have uh, unlocked all those cards. Now, having both in the game might be something too challenging for the developers. That's something that I don't know anything about, but I'm just saying I would like to have both if possible. Of course, it would be a lot of work. But uh, the programs and, of course, the live series collections with the brand new Legends and Flashbacks in this game have definitely separated the two games, in my opinion. I think that the programs, as well as all these brand new Legends, we still don't necessarily have it confirmed yet that there are no more new Legends in the game. I remember in last year's game, they confirmed that, I, I think a few months into the game cycle, that there would not be any more new Legends. There could still be uh, variations of Legends that they had in the game. But I think uh, having Team Affinity cards are amazing. I know last year we had Team Epics, and that's kind of the way that we've had it in the past. I think the Team Affinities are awesome. Play with those cards, uh, exchange them, as well as uh, just simply use them and, and unlock those cards for that specific team. I think that's pretty cool. I think that uh, MLB The Show 
included more packs in MLB The Show 19. I think there was a, a large variety of packs in the store. They also increased the pack odds. There was also more stub sales uh, throughout MLB The Show 19 than there were in 18. So I definitely think that that's a bonus. It, it makes for a different market and uh, it makes for inflation with the market and different prices to, to adjust here and there with those stub sales. But I definitely think it allows for the player base to have more opportunity to uh, get the players that they want, whether it's playing the game and, and uh, flipping cards throughout the market or uh, purchasing stubs and buying the cards straight up that they want to use. I think uh, the creative player system in this year's game was a lot better. Uh, grinding it out, the cre grinding out your creative player by using him, uh, starting off with the gold one, playing some online games to unlock the diamond, or uh, playing against the computer for many games in order to unlock the diamond. I think that this is a pretty cool aspect. I would like to see them return with this in the future in MLB The Show 20. And now we're going to go ahead and get into some gameplay tuning. Uh, I know I'm not going to talk too much about uh, offline modes like Road to the Show, Franchise, and March to October. I don't know too much about those modes, but something that I uh, I have noticed throughout this year's game is the randomness with pitching. If you uh, get good feedback on your meter, slightly miss the hoop, uh, the pitch is going to go in a random location. If you're on top of both where you have the good feedback on the, the meter at the bottom there and then of course at the hoop on the top, if you're using analog pitching, I think you're going to have more success, but at times it can still be rather random. I mean, that, that was a good slider from Bob Feller here. I know we're using a pitcher that doesn't necessarily have the highest control attributes, but in years past, it didn't really matter um, as far as the control attribute. If you were able to have good input on whichever meter you're using, whether it's analog, uh, pulse, or meter, uh, then you will be able to locate the pitch much better. I think we see some things with foul balls where there are too many foul balls on you know, pitchers' locations or uh, pitcher strikes, uh, good pitches where you have bad timing. I think it goes both ways. I've had some foul balls where I felt like I should have struck out. Uh, here's a great opportunity right here. Here's a great example. I was way under that very late. I foul tipped it with Griffey, and I ended up actually hitting a home run in that at bat. So where I could have uh, missed a couple pitches, struck out actually, I ended up hitting a home run. It makes the skill gap slightly decreased, I would say, a little bit when you have a little bit of randomness in those um, in those situations where it's pitching and hitting both. Uh, sometimes you can be on the ball and line out. Sometimes you can be off of it and miss it. Those things are going to happen. I think it's very difficult to adjust these things, but I, this is a video where I'm trying to help improve uh, certain things for MLB The Show 20, at least get the information out there, let you guys know what my thoughts are. And um, in this situation, it can be very difficult to pitch at times. I used to pitch myself, and I think that locating a specific pitch in a specific spot is one of the hardest things to do in any sport, as well as it is to hit that uh, exact pitch. I think that hitting a baseball is the toughest thing to do in any sport regardless, but that's just my opinion, as well as uh, I know that this is also a video game. This isn't realistic. It's not meant to be realistic. We're playing with uh, ultimate teams, pretty much. This is a Diamond Dynasty mode where you, you're able to play with legends and current players all in one. I think uh, basically what I'm trying to say is in years past, I think it was more rewarded for a perfect feedback. If you pitch and you had a one-to-one -one perfect feedback, a blinking good pitch that hit the hoop, it was more rewarding on the pitching aspect. And in this year's game, I think it's more rewarding for the hitter. I think that that pitch, that last pitch that I just threw right there with good feedback, a curveball low and away to Frank Thomas, that ended up over the middle of the plate. Luckily, he didn't hit it out for a home run. But that's kind of what I'm talking about. A blinking good pitch. I barely missed the hoop. Like, not even by a, a full ball icon missing the hoop. And I still hung that pitch. It was a, a home run pitch, batting practice. And uh, luckily, he fouled it off. But I definitely have been looking into some things offline in terms of MLB The Show 20. It seems like they're going to implement more customization in modes like this March to October, as well as Franchise and hopefully Road to the Show. We saw some different things with some of those modes. Uh, March to October was kind of an accelerated franchise. We also saw Road to the Show mix in some archetypes and some stuff like that. I didn't really dabble with that too much, but uh, I did like to play some of these brand new moments. We saw the moments were something new in the game. 
And honestly, I thought that these moments made the grinding experience a lot more fun, a lot more manageable to do. And in order to get some of these elite cards, you had to complete some of the moments. I think that that was pretty cool. I think uh, having the offline aspect is something cool. I think they need to continue on with that, as well as make it uh, important to have some of the best cards in the game be able to unlock uh, just from playing online uh, in ranked seasons, battle royale, events, stuff like that. So I've really enjoyed this year's game and everything that they've done with it. I really hope that they continue to improve for MLB The Show 20 and implement some uh, of these same ideas as well as improve them. So hopefully uh, you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what your guys' thoughts are about the upcoming MLB The Show 20 game. I know we're still a few months away, but I figured uh, it's a good time to go ahead and make this video, see what you guys think, and I know they're still working on the game. So now is a good time to put your thoughts in and uh, let the developers know what's going on, what you guys think and uh, see what we can make happen in the next year's game. But until next time, everyone, I'm College Lefty, and I'll see you. Peace out.